Good evening, and welcome to the Crypto Overnighter. I'm Nicodemus, and I will be your host as we take a look at the latest cryptocurrency news and analysis. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. And remember, none of this is financial advice. And it's 10 p.m. on a Sunday, June 11th, 2023. And welcome back to the Crypto Overnighter, where we have no sponsors, no hidden agendas, and no BS. But I do have a programming note, so let's get to that. This coming weekend is my wife's birthday. I will be taking Saturday and Sunday off from the show to celebrate the fact that she's alive. This means that on Saturday and Sunday there will be no podcast video. I will still be checking in on things in case something important happens, so you'll still be able to catch me on Twitter. There is a link to my Twitter account in the show notes down past the too long didn't listen section. And with that, let's get to the news. Because our first story focuses on U.S. Senator Cynthia Lummis and her efforts to establish a regulatory framework for cryptocurrencies in the United States. The senator is actively working on a regulatory framework that could enable individuals and businesses to own and trade digital assets in the U.S. This comes in response to the rapid growth and widespread adoption of crypto. Her commitment to this cause has been well received by the crypto community as she continues to push for a positive regulatory environment for digital assets. This initiative was initially expected to be launched in April in collaboration with Senator Kirsten Gillibrand. The two senators have been working together on a bipartisan basis to produce comprehensive regulations for cryptocurrencies. This legislative effort is expected to make significant strides in Congress this year, providing a much needed framework for the fast evolving digital asset industry. Lummis recently took to Twitter to share her party's success in preventing a 30% digital asset mining tax from being included in the recent debt ceiling deal. However, she emphasized that the fight for a clear regulatory framework for the crypto industry is far from over. The proposed bill has several goals. One goal is to clearly define cryptocurrencies and potentially remove the security designation. By establishing a precise classification for tokens, the legislation aims to create a stable environment for businesses and investors in the crypto industry. The effort is designed to address regulatory uncertainties, stimulate innovation, and promote responsible growth within the sector. For her part, Gillibrand has highlighted the importance of a careful approach. This revised bill will provide clear guidelines on the procedures necessary to acquire tokens, establishing a comprehensive framework that covers various aspects of tokenization. This proposed legislation is also expected to impose a universal ban on algorithmic stablecoins. However, further discussions are needed to determine which entities are authorized to issue stablecoins and the requirements for maintaining U.S. dollar reserves. The bipartisan efforts of Cynthia Lummis and Kirsten Gillibrand represent a significant step towards establishing a clear regulatory framework for the crypto industry in the United States. Their work aims to provide clarity and stability for business and investors, to stimulate innovation, and to promote responsible growth within the sector. As the crypto industry continues to evolve rapidly, such regulatory efforts are becoming increasingly important. I want to thank you so much for listening in tonight. Please like and subscribe. It makes a huge difference in reaching new listeners. So thank you. Next up, we have a warning from a former attorney with the U.S. Security Exchange Commission, John Reed Stark. Stark expressed his belief that cryptocurrency exchanges are headed towards a long and challenging conflict with the U.S. regulatory agency. The recent legal actions by the SEC against major platforms like Binance and Coinbase have prompted Stark's cautionary advice, highlighting the inherent risks and lack of consumer protections for these platforms. Recently, the SEC has taken legal action against Binance Holding Limited and its CEO CZ. Separately, they've also moved against Coinbase, accusing them of violating securities laws. These lawsuits are what prompted Stark's cautionary tale. He has publicly supported the SEC's enforcement efforts related to cryptocurrency, stating that regardless of the promises made by promoters, cryptocurrency trading platforms are inherently risky and unsafe. Stark further elaborated that these platforms are currently under scrutiny from U.S. regulatory and law enforcement agencies. He believes that this is only the beginning of a larger crackdown. His concerns stem from the fact that many of these platforms are not registered by the SEC. 
That registration is something that he sees as a direct link to the lack of operational supervision and a significant deficiency in consumer protection. Stark pointed out that there's not just a gap, but a chasm in customer protection on these platforms. He highlighted several issues, including a lack of record keeping, no requirements for pricing or order flow, and no inherent obligation to comply with U.S. laws and rules against market manipulation, insider trading, and trading against customers. He also noted that these platforms lack mandated cybersecurity or privacy protection requirements, internal compliance obligations, customer complaint handling requirements, and minimum financial standards for operation. Interestingly, even before the SEC's lawsuits against Binance and Coinbase, there was a notable decline in trading volumes on centralized exchanges. This trend suggests a decreasing interest on trading on centralized entities. Centralized exchanges posted a $307.4 billion volume in May. That's a decline of 23.2% from April and the lowest monthly volume since November of 2020. By contrast, decentralized exchange volumes saw a modest increase from $60.52 billion in April to $67.51 billion in May. Stark's warning and the recent legal actions by the SEC against major cryptocurrency platforms underscore the increasing scrutiny and regulatory pressure that these platforms are facing. While the future of these platforms remains uncertain, the current trend suggests a shift in user preference from centralized to decentralized exchanges. However, these platforms' inherent risks and lack of customer protection remain a significant concern. Our third story tonight is our cover story as we explore a significant shift in the world of crypto. More than half of the Bitcoin held by crypto firms for their customers in the U.S. have moved offshore to international exchanges. This movement is largely due to unclear regulations in the United States. A report from CryptoQuant reveals that Bitcoin reserves on U.S.-based crypto exchanges have dropped to levels last seen in 2017. These reserves are being transferred to non-U.S. platforms. The decline in Bitcoin reserves on American exchanges is a direct result of the lack of a clear regulatory framework for the crypto industry in the United States. Instead of providing clear guidelines, regulators have opted for an enforcement-based approach. This approach has led crypto firms to move offshore where the regulatory environment is more favorable. Regions such as the EU and Hong Kong have seen an influx of capital, talent, and digital asset firms due to their comprehensive regulations for the emerging crypto economy. Hong Kong, for instance, has been particularly welcoming to crypto communities. The region stated that it will adopt the same activity, same risks, same regulation principle for entities similar to traditional financial firms. The regulatory uncertainty in the U.S. has led several exchanges to leave the country. Others have stopped offering certain products and services due to accusations of regulatory violations. As a result, the U.S. is gradually losing its market share in both emerging and existing sectors. This loss is exacerbated by the ongoing process of de-dollarization. The movement of crypto assets is not limited to Bitcoin. Ether reserves in the U.S. have also been steadily decreasing. Currently, about 56% of Ethereum on crypto exchanges is held outside the U.S. Moreover, the trading volume of international crypto exchanges is four times greater than that of U.S.-based platforms. The dominance of Bitcoin's spot trading volume in the U.S. has dropped below 2017 levels and is now at 21%. American exchanges have minimal exposure to perpetual futures trading markets, which have a volume 11 times that of spot trading volume. That's because U.S. firms are not permitted to offer this service. In contrast, Asia has seen significant growth in both spot and futures trading volume, with increases as high as 30 and 20% respectively. CryptoQuant's research also found that the market cap of U.S.-based stablecoins has dropped by 35%, resulting in a loss of $15 billion so far in 2023. Despite these challenges, the U.S. remains the world's leading player in the Bitcoin mining industry. However, this position could be at risk due to unfavorable regulations. Think about what the Texas legislature tried to do to Bitcoin miners recently. The U.S. government has shown that it's considering targeting miners with the possibility of higher taxes. This regulatory uncertainty is driving crypto firms and assets offshore, causing the U.S. to lose its crypto market share. Moving on, 
we have the CEO of Coinbase, Brian Armstrong, advocating for clear regulations in the cryptocurrency industry. He believes the process of regulating crypto is not as complex as it's often made out to be. He's confident that the U.S. will eventually achieve regulatory clarity, even though it will take some time. Armstrong made these comments during an interview with the Wall Street Journal. This interview took place a few days after the SEC filed a lawsuit against Coinbase. The SEC accused Coinbase of operating as a securities exchange, broker dealership, and clearinghouse without the necessary registration. In response to the lawsuit, Armstrong said that he did not believe Coinbase needed those registrations to operate. He explained that the assets traded on Coinbase are commodities, not securities, and therefore don't require such registrations. He also mentioned that Coinbase has acquired a broker-dealer license, but it remains inactive because they've not been allowed to activate it. Armstrong emphasized that the lawsuit between the SEC and Coinbase is significant for the entire U.S. crypto industry. He hopes that it will lead to more clarity and prevent the U.S. from falling behind other countries in terms of crypto regulation. He also expressed his belief that once the U.S. has clear and stable regulations for the cryptocurrency industry, it will encourage crypto businesses that have left the country to return. He said that entrepreneurs will be more likely to come back to the U.S. if they feel like they won't be randomly attacked or face high legal bills. A report by Cointelegraph highlighted that the share of global crypto developers in the U.S. has decreased by 26% from 2018 to 2022. The report cited a lack of regulatory clarity as a significant factor and suggested that America's edge in the crypto industry may be slipping. Armstrong pointed out several areas of regulation that need to be clarified. He believes there should be clear boundaries between the two major U.S. financial regulators, the SEC and the CFTC. He noted that in other countries, like the U.K., they have a single financial regulator, while the U.S. is currently experiencing a turf war between the two regulatory bodies. He suggested that some regulations from traditional finance could be applied to the crypto industry. These include basic consumer protections, financial statement audit requirements, and procedures for anti-money laundering and know your customer. Despite the ongoing uncertainty, Armstrong remains committed to seeking clarity on crypto regulations in the U.S. He has repeatedly asked the SEC for more clarity, but has not received any feedback. He responded to the SEC lawsuit against Coinbase on Twitter. He said that he's proud to represent the industry in court and hopes to gain some clarity around crypto rules. The ongoing lawsuit between the SEC and Coinbase is a significant event in the U.S. crypto industry. It highlights the need for clear and stable regulations that foster growth and innovation in the sector. As the situation unfolds, it will be interesting to see how it influences the future of crypto regulation in the U.S. and beyond. And finally tonight, let's discuss the recent situation with the Solana Foundation and Polygon Labs as they express their dissatisfaction with the SEC's classification of their native coins as securities. These crypto giants are pushing back against the SEC's claims, highlighting the ongoing debate and uncertainty regarding the regulatory status of crypto. The Solana Foundation openly voiced its opposition to the SEC's portrayal of Sol as a security. Despite this, the nonprofit said that it welcomes the ongoing involvement of policymakers as collaborative partners in regulation. The aim is to achieve legal clarity on these matters for numerous entrepreneurs in the U.S. who are building in the digital asset space. In the past week, Sol's price has been on a decline of over 26%. However, the Solana Foundation's stance is not theirs alone. Polygon Labs also expressed its disagreement with the SEC's classification of its native coin, Matic, as a security. Polygon Labs said Matic was developed and deployed outside the U.S. and continues to focus on the global community that supports the network. They emphasized that Matic was an integral part of the Polygon technology from the very beginning. Ensuring network security is a role it continues to fulfill. They also clarified that their actions did not specifically target the U.S., but aimed rather to make Matic available to a broad group of individuals. The price of Matic has also seen a significant drop with a decrease of nearly 2% on the day and over 33% in the last week. As we covered last night, this follows the delisting of Matic from Robinhood, along with Solana and ADA, all due to the SEC's labeling of these coins as securities. Remember, in its lawsuit against Binance, the SEC specifically named Sol, Matic, and 10 other tokens as securities. 
Both the Solana Foundation and Polygon Labs' responses to the SEC claims highlight the ongoing debate and uncertainty surrounding the regulatory status of crypto. As the crypto industry continues to evolve, the need for clear and comprehensive regulatory guidelines becomes increasingly apparent. So, what happened? Well, tonight, we started by highlighting the efforts of U.S. Senator Cynthia Lummis, who is actively working on a regulatory framework to enable individuals and businesses to own and trade digital assets in the U.S. Her commitment to creating a positive regulatory environment for the crypto industry has been well-received by the community. Next, we discuss the warning from former SEC attorney John Reed Stark. Stark believes cryptocurrency exchanges are headed towards a challenging conflict with the SEC. Stark emphasized the risks and lack of consumer protection in these platforms, as evidenced by recent legal actions by the SEC against major players like Binance and Coinbase. We then explored a significant shift in the crypto landscape, as more than half of the Bitcoin held by U.S.-based crypto firms for their customers has moved offshore into international exchanges. This movement is driven by unclear regulatory environment in the U.S., pushing crypto firms to seek more favorable jurisdictions. Then we discussed Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong's views on crypto regulation. Armstrong believes the process of regulating crypto is not as complex as it seems and expresses confidence that the U.S. will eventually achieve regulatory clarity. I think he's right, but how much damage will be done in the meantime? Lastly, we address the disagreement expressed by the Solana Foundation and Polygon Labs with the SEC's classification of their native coins as securities. These crypto giants reject the SEC's claims, underscoring the ongoing debate and uncertainty regarding the regulatory status of crypto. Throughout tonight's episode, we saw the need for clear and comprehensive regulatory guidelines in the crypto industry. Establishing a positive regulatory environment is crucial for the growth, stability, and responsible innovation of the sector. As the industry continues to evolve, it is essential to navigate the challenges and uncertainties to ensure the long-term success of crypto. And that's going to do it for us tonight. I want to thank you, my listeners, because when you stop listening, I will stop talking. If you enjoyed tonight's show, then please like, follow, subscribe, leave a rating, or maybe a review. And in the meantime, we'll see you tomorrow night.